I'm just trying to think of the positives, all the positives that came out of yesterday. You know, thank goodness Alfie passed away in my mum's arms. Why I was still able to speak to him on FaceTime. It wasn't when I was up at Camp 2 with no signal. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can look in it. I'm just trying to look at all the positives of, you know, the reason why he passed away yesterday. There was a reason why it happened yesterday. And just, you know, looking at all the, the positives from it. it. It was a lot. It's a lot and I don't think it's going to really sink in. I just posted about Alfie on my social media this morning and obviously he's very well loved with all of my audience and they've known him for 10 years, you know, being on the workout videos and just reading some of those messages has, you know, got me a bit teary eyed, but I, I wanted to post so I could get, a, get it. I, I got to move on right now. I can't like dwell in the past. Um, I think if I sit too much in that of, you know, missing Alfie and wishing that I was at home and you know, my dad leaving, like I'm, I'm not gonna have the right mindset to get there. So it's almost like I'm just kind of putting that thought process on pause. When you're getting messages from people, obviously it makes you feel supported. It makes you feel like you're not alone, but we gotta remember that they are just little moments. The most important thing is what's inside of us. We don't get significance from somebody else. So of course it feels really nice where you get a message from someone you're like, Oh my goodness, this inspired me so much. And you know, you've got this and keep on going. Like in the moment, it gives you that spurt that you need. The thing that we got to remember is that when we don't have that, we tend to find significance from what other people think. And you don't want to do that. You want to be like, awesome comment. And thank you for giving me a little extra boost. But you are already here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rebecca. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Aww, you. Where's oh, Alan to cut up? <laughs> These people are just kind of helping you get a little bit. It's not like you're down here and you need somebody else to bring you up here. Like I think so many people think that to get a goal, you have to have all of these people supporting you and you need to feel significant because of what other people think of you. All right, so this is Pigo. Spelt P-I-G-O-W, but pronounced Pigo, P-I-G-G-O. And I've had him since I was uh, two, two and a half. Comes with me everywhere. He's the perfect kind of flat pillow. So I did ask Kenton if I could bring him. So he, he will be coming all the way up with us. <laughs> he probably needs a shower more than me. Yeah, so these are, these are actually the summit boots. I get really cold, so I'm gonna be wearing these from now on. Um, but they are pretty robust. So I've got all of my clothes that I'm gonna be wearing tomorrow right here so that when I wake up in the morning, I can literally just roll the clothes into the sleeping bag and kind of get used to getting changed inside of a sleeping bag because it's gonna be cold as we get higher up. So just preparing because, you know, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Um, so when I, we kind of landed, I, you know, I was probably more concerned about, you know, making sure my dad had, a, had, had has the right time and Luke was set up with knowing who everybody was. Um, and then as we started going to the trek, I still still think it was just, you know, making sure that everybody was okay. You know, a lot of the trips that I've done, like when I went to Ecuador, it was just me. So it was me packing my bag. It was me fixing my water. Um, and this trip, it was it, so far, it hasn't really been that independent, which is fine because I know that I'm going to get my independence part, you know, once I go up to the, to the final summit push. Getting to base camp was easier than I thought it was going to be. And I know this next bit is definitely going to be much more brutal. I mean, Luke has been amazing. You know, he looks after me. Um, I think it's almost worse sometimes because now I've got to figure out how to look after myself after like camp two. I have no idea really what to expect. It's like, oh, we're going to play in the ice hole today. Like, what exactly does that mean? Yeah, we did that hike yesterday. I was a little rough. Got a little lightheaded at the end, and then I was like fighting it all day. I just even like looking at your phone made me. So cool. Well, crampon point in the ice fall. So this is where we start going up. The so crampons are on. Uh, don't just sort of switch off and just look at your feet and donk, donk, donk. You've got to be aware of what else is around you. So we're going to go up for a few hours and then just pop down for perhaps a late brunch, something okay. like that. Okay. okay. Fab. Yeah, I feel good. It's, it's nice to know that this is halfway to camp one because I know I can get to camp one. 
And it's always just wondering if you can get to the next spot. But yeah, and you're just, I've never been at this altitude before um, climbing, so just taking moments to catch my breath and trying to keep the pace going. Taking a layer off because it's definitely got warmer. Hey everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, because I will be off the grid for around five to six days. So we're going off on our first rotation. Basically what that means is we go up to camp one, uh, that'll be about six hours. We'll stay there one night and then we'll go to camp two. I'm just preparing to... Uh get up at like midnight and get out in the cold and start to trek the same trek that we just did today but uh, a little bit further and a little bit colder because it will be dark so just trying to pack up stuff i know we're gonna feel a bit rough do you want all these socks so i'll keep these ones for walking up to camp two Shoo I've not yet used this because I'm pretty good at peeing in my bottle. Well, if you figure four a day for six days. Okay, shove it in there. Then. And put that in whatever. there too. Uh, we'll want to put that in a separate bag. In a separate bag. So. And originally, when I met Luke, he was, you know, he wasn't even coming to base camp with me. Uh, Kenton actually said to him, "Hey, would you like to come to camp too?" You know, not going to go for the full summit because, you know, that's what Rebecca's doing. Um, if you wanted to, great, but there's a lot more equipment and things that you have to get. But uh, you know what? I could probably get you a, a permit for Camp 2 so that you could at least go through the ice falls. You'd have that experience. We had a conversation about it. He said, well, I'm already going to base camp. Like, you know, I may as well just, you know, try to do Camp 2. <laughs> I had to tell myself for about the last three hours, I feel outstanding, I won't quit. I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't say, holy shit, who thought this was a good idea? Um, you know, the last four hours, the first two, you're into it. And then we got cold and uh, you kept thinking, when are we gonna hit the sun? When are we gonna hit the sun? Then you hit the sun. It feels beautiful. On my body, it feels tiring as you can be here by my breath. But it's like we're just taking a moment just to take it all in. So Luke was always meant to just come to camp two and we get to camp one the first time, you know, all of us and we felt rough. Seeing your foot have those issues early and you just kept up. Okay. Fuck, I'm not gonna complain. This is our tent. I oh, know my left, right boot. Yeah, I don't think I ate enough. Yeah, I know I don't. Uh, we're getting so good. Passing on. That's what I guess. Never fools you. Oh, I've already got caught. Is it 
I guess it was just my boots. I was hard rubbing on something here and it started to, that, that was actually starting to blister. And then we managed to take that up. And I've also got a, oh, see, look at the blister on the other side. Oh, shit. Probably needs airing out and a new one on. I'm gonna set up my foot because I've got a blister on this side. And then tape up this side. And then this side was rubbing against my boots. So. Oh, I like shit. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. I feel rough. Now we're in a tent, but stripped down because it's like so hot in here. I'm good, thank you. This is our lunch. Macaroni and cheese, see if I can stomach this. But we are just missing a spoon. Oh, I think it's underneath your leg. So it's your first meal. What are you, what are you knocking down there? Some mac and cheese. I don't think I've ever had food like this before. Little army, three cheese, mac and cheese, dried food. <sighs> well, that, but hopefully this is gonna bring me back to life. You always look a bit puffy. Some bag mac and cheese. I feel puffy everywhere. We got a matching underwear, how cold is that? <laughs> oh my God, I've never felt so rough. With no sacks. <laughs> Getting up and walking around, you, you feel 50% better, for sure. Cool, well, I'll get pies brought across as and when it's ready. Thank you, Ken. Sounds great, thanks, Ken. I like I've got a babysitter. <laughs> um, but we're gonna get up, have some porridge, get dressed, and then head up to camp two. And we'll be there for like four nights. So we'll be able to like settle a little bit. And I believe there's like a communal mess tent as well, which yeah. will have a heater in. So it's just a bit more. Toilet. And there's a toilet. Okay, we've been on this tent for 20 hours. <laughs> Drying right now. To eat some porridge. <laughs> and it is a struggle. The next day we were going to camp two, and that's about a three, four hour hike in just one direction. Did you put some of the sunscreen stuff on? Yeah. Okay. The route to camp two is meant to be fast because it goes so close to Nopsi, but with that comes an objective danger that I'm a little bit worried about. But everybody seems to be doing okay. There's slight headaches all around, but that's, uh, that's pretty much normal. And the first like two hours were going okay. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. Yep. Cool gang. A little step at a time. One step at a time. Every step counts. Every step counts. And then the last like hour, 90 minutes, I kept looking back and I could see that Luke was struggling. Walk as if one can breathe. If you go too fast. I'll give you a bag to get you by your skin. What's that? I'll give you a bag to get you boy. We'll give you a bag to the kitchen boy. Oh. Yeah. Slowly, slowly. I mean, we're near that lower camp too. Just take your, just take your time. Like, I'm walking like so I can breathe, because otherwise I have to keep stopping and I feel queasy. So just, I mean, it's not far off. Plug away at it. I'll keep playing with it. When we got to camp two, we were sitting down at dinner, and that's where I was kind of looking yeah. to my side, going. You know what, this is, this doesn't look right. Oh, I think Luke's struggling. Um, I'm proud of him for getting up here. I know he said he felt really faint and was seeing stars and blacking out. Um, so I think he's eating some food, so that's good. So now I just need to get him to, to like lie down a bit. He was, he was in tears when we came back into the, into the hut. I think he was just like, I don't think he, I don't think he had any more in him, but no, he was definitely struggling. Well, I think these are frozen. So they're definitely not going to be warm. But there is a pair at the top of my bag if you want to get those, Luke. Should we get your sim bag on here? Yep. He doesn't look right, and then Kenton's asking him questions, and we managed to get him on some oxygen. We took Advil and we took some other stuff too, so yeah. just keep it on you and then. No rush. That night he slept on oxygen. And he kind of felt like okay the next day, and then he was still having more oxygen. You feel a bit better? Something you can tip to. 
Two. You can use this overnight, put it on a high, low flow rate, and you keep the nasal cannula in. It won't be too much of a hindrance. Mask can be a bit of a hindrance. Yep. But the nasal cannula, you can essentially leave it. We can put it down to a half. Put it on you. Do uh, it's got more to do. Yeah, but, but, but I think you're the one that's not feeling quite so well right now. So. Yeah. Rebecca's saying all the, all the right things. She's looking alert. She's looking sprightly. You're looking somewhat not like that. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, we're we gonna keep it on you for the time being. Yeah. Yeah. I think it might just been a big push today. Yeah. It was just like because I mean, you were going and then trying to catch yeah. your breath. It's a huge game. Going and there. then catching yeah. your breath. Uh, yeah, and, you know, dark British humour. If you're not eating that egg, I don't have it. <laughs> you can definitely have the egg. I'll try and get some of the rice in. A bit yeah, you're looking more alert. Yeah. You know, really more engaged yeah, in conversation. Yeah, it's there for a while. Let's just get light from your tent light. Okay. Uh, Three, two, one. Get up. But you're a smiley. You some ears. He didn't acclimatize and that's when he kept waking up and he had the fear that he was not going to survive. And that's when I called out to Kenton early in the morning and I was like, we need to do something about this because this could be really dangerous. He's on oxygen. He's still not feeling good. That's when you can start getting really serious conditions and you can die. Well, during the night last night, like I could feel Luke like tossing and turning and getting upset and I was trying to say like you know kind of you know, let's let's do something about it but he was saying no 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 and then it got really bad in the morning and then I was like you know I think we need some help here. So I, I think there's a degree of anxiety in there he's out of his comfort zone we're all feeling a bit rubbish yeah um you know, there's a bounce back with oxygen obviously at the same time I think it would be probably in everybody's best interest if we try to get him down. And there's two ways we can do that. We can either chopper him down or we can send him down with a sherb. So, yeah, we need to have a little bit of a sit down and have a powwow about what's the best yeah. um, option. It's real. You know, it hit me the first night. And then yesterday I bounced back and felt better after oxygen all night. And then last night when I went to bed, I wasn't feeling great. And I was like, okay, I'll just put the oxygen on. And then I, then I was like in the middle of a dream or a hallucination or whatever. And um, I just woke up and I, you know, the whole night was just a battle like to get much sleep because I was afraid to close my eyes that I've never had the feeling that if, that if I close my eyes, I might not wake up. And uh, then when I, then I had fallen asleep and I woke up and I didn't, I mean, it felt like I was like, when am I alive? And my dad, like, you know, it just felt so awkward. And tears were just flooding down my face and Rebecca woke up and held me and she's like, are you okay, okay? And I didn't want her to get anybody. I didn't want anybody to see me like that. And so that's when they decided, yep, we need to, we need to get him in a helicopter. We need to go. Um, now, we, we, you know, we, we could see, you know, if, if you stop oxygen now and have breakfast and check your, check your stats. You now, if they were really high, that might sway me another way but right now i think it's, it's definitely in your best interest health wise to to go down you know you, you did what you needed to do you're not you're not here to acclimatize you don't need it to be a shitty two days you mm. know get back down and enjoy base camp you know yeah no i don't i don't want to one thing I don't want to do is stay up here and be a burden, you know what I mean? Because it is, you know, at this point it's like, what's the best to support Rebecca too? You know, and if I'm, if I'm like this for another day, that's, that's not supporting her. Hey there, it's, it's Mr. Cool here again. I, I've had to put Mr. Mr. Ren back onto oxygen, so he's got the oxygen mask on. So he's at rest right now on one litre flow oxygen, but when, as soon as he starts to move, uh yeah he he's, he shows signs of um uh black um black spots in his in his vision and he's also very unsteady on his feet
He couldn't get out because of the bad weather. Okay, you're breaking up again, but uh, I've got the general gist of it. Uh, just keep us informed through his worry what's, uh, what's happening, please, Ellis. And that's when you're in this, like, awful dilemma of like, hey, he's starting to feel better because he's on oxygen. It's the daytime. We're getting food into him. He's drinking more water. But at the same time, it's like, we got to get him down. He's going to be okay. He's going to cry on the helicopter ride. Looks very emotional. But he's going to be fine. I know once he gets back down and he's got a text from me, he's going to feel much better. the giver, not the receiver or the taker, and uh, it's just tough to be knocked down like this, so uh, just thought I'd share that, it still hurts, we've been we're back out there, she's going to look out the window, see the ice falls that she's got to come through, probably the most dangerous part of the whole, of the whole deal. Is the ice falls, so it's actually the even your person up there. Oh, God, I remember. I didn't know it was possible to have something that much. Now we're taking off the base camp. And luckily the next day they were able to get him down and he was able to go all the way back down to Namche into a hospital there. And they said to him when he was there, like he was still not great. Um, and it definitely took him a couple of days to recover. So I'm just trying to focus on today. Because I think today we were supposed to just go for like an hour hike. So I don't think it's going to make a, a, a massive difference. And then tomorrow we'll do something a little bit more. It just goes to show like you don't know what's going to happen when you get here. It doesn't matter who you are, what training you've had, you know, where you come from. If you get hit with altitude sickness, you get, you get hit. Just trying to... Remember that I've got to keep going. It's very easy to kind of get your attention on like, what's happening in the now, which is important. I'm just trying to think like, how, I, how do I feel? You can't rely on other people to fill up your tank. They're just like a little extra cherry on the top. There's so, so many times people put negative stuff on social media, why? because it attracts, it gives you comments, it gets you likes, it gets you engagement, right? And then what happens when those comments go and that post is gone for 24 hours? You're back exactly where you're at, still feeling down here, still feeling like you're not enough. So we can't expect or allow other people to fill up our cup. We have to be the one that fills it up. And then when people wanna add some extra little boost to us, great but the majority of your cup is filled up because of you and your beliefs.